Welcome to the video lecture series, Culture, Worldview, and Origins. We're going over right now in this series, this part of the series, culture, and uh, the cognitive part of a culture that is cultivated, and how we subconsciously have been conformed and formed by our environment, by our culture. Didn't understand that much of it, uh, until I went to another culture. When you go to another culture, you, you, you're struck with how things are different and, and how they think differently and how they reason differently. Um, and I wonder, how do they come up with that? Where, where does that come from? Well, when I started teaching cross-culturally, my students thought the same thing about me, is uh, that I thought differently and I communicated and taught differently. Um, so that is what got me into the area of, of culture and cognitive processing is that how our culture influences how we think. So this is a series on culture on, with 21 points that we've observed of differences between my way, my cultural pattern of thinking um, and my students' cultural pattern to thinking tendency-wise. Not a blanket statement of all of them were like this or I am like this. It's a tendency. And uh, since it's a, a cultural tendency, it means it was something that was cultivated. And so it, it can be re-cultivated re or it, uh, it could be strengthened or it could be lessened, it could be brought. And so uh, these are the tendencies and I've contrasted them between a, a Western tendency, which is my probably academic uh, background versus a non-Western, which is just an original background or, or something that is more natural. Um, so that is the, the, the comparisons. And uh, what I would say is that these comparisons are not in concrete and, and they're, they're my personal observations. Um, they're, I, I believe they're observations that were, were true to my context and my, my experience. Uh, they may not be to yours, but uh, uh, if you do have experience in this and you would like to comment or, or um, write us, you're welcome to communicate with us through the blog spot. Uh, the blog is at doubleroadrover.com or directly through email at thn.academia at gmail.com. Okay, thank you. We're Tim and Holly Nyquist. Um, this is the third part of culture. We have uh, each part, we're, we're doing three points of the, of the 21. And so what we've, in the first one on culture, we did the universal domains, uh, matter and spirit, and the universal operating system. Then in part two, we did the locus of authority, where is the authority located? Then that authority structure within that person, how, is it, how does it change the structure, character, and personality of that person? And then space, and how space affects how we function and move within that space. Now what we're gonna touch on is number seven, time. The Western tendency, is to see time um, as chronos. There's two types of time. There's kairos and chronos. And us Westerners are more concentrated on and, and more uh, cultivated in the chronos time. Uh, that means time is mechanical. It's marked off usually by, by a clock. It's linear, it's progressive, it has a point and it's going in a direction. And it's usually like in technology, it goes from uh, one level of technology, linear to a higher level, and that's why it's progressive. Progressive is always going to the next model, next year, next whatever. And uh, time is objective, in other words, it's an object. Um, what do you mean by that? Well, what can we do with time? As Westerners, we can save time. We can spend time. We can invest time. We can waste time. So for us, it's kind of like time is an object um, that can be manipulated and can be used. Um, that's Kronos, concept of time. My non-Western friends um, do not go by Chronos 
time. They go by Kairos time. And Kairos time is more of a centered on what happens within that bracket of time. And so it's, it's life events and it's cyclical because they practice things yearly. And uh, it, it often start, it starts in the, in the rural areas with the, with the planting season and then with the growing season, then the harvesting. And, and so it's, uh, it's, there's events that are cyclical. Their time is conservative uh, because they base it on cycles. Uh, they preserve those cycles and they preserve those cycles for generations. And so they're conservative. They're not progressive. They're conservative. And time is subjective, which means time is about the subject. Time is about um, you and I and what we do within that time. So how does that play out? Well, as a Westerner, uh, how are we doing on time? Yeah, okay. Um, time is important to us. Time exists. And another objective form of time is time is money. Okay, so I, uh, I did. I worked my way through college, through school. That's right. United Parcel Service. I learned what time was um, and how to do things on time. Then I go to a non-Western culture and boy did I have to hit the brakes. Um, why? What's, what's the difference? What happens? This side values conversation, values interaction values your time invested in in them and if they're talking with you and visiting with you and you look at your watch right away it's a signal with you're done and and they get the impression that okay uh, I'm not as important as your next um, thing on your calendar and you may not see them again not for weeks um, this side over here um, I had to adjust because I am from a, a Kronos type of time and, and uh, I had to learn is, is that okay students we're going to meet Saturday morning at 8 o'clock and we're going to leave on a bus what time did they get there yeah they left their house at 8 o'clock and some of them might be a half an hour away and uh, so my concept of time was a little different than, than theirs. They, we had a great time once everybody got there, but what I learned is that depending on the importance of the event was how late it started. And so if it was a, an excursion for uh, just going out with the students, it was uh, between 15 to 20 minutes, 25, half an hour late. Um, if it was a, a, a greater event, like a wedding, um, it could be an hour to two hours. If it's a presidential speech, it, he could be up to five hours um, off schedule. So it's just or off my schedule. Excuse me. Um, so Kronos is a very, or Kronos and Kairos are, are very interesting concepts to understand when you um, start trying to coordinate events and do things and meet with clients and, and, and uh, just uh, coordinate things. Just understand that um, we have different concepts of time and uh, we have to really communicate in, in Spanish. We, they would say, students would say, in punto, okay? That means on the dot, okay? What's that mean? Well, th that means it's, it's not the usual time. That means it's uh, uh, the, the prof wants to leave in punto, uh, uh, on the dot. And so that's, um, those are the two concepts uh, of time. Number eight, cognitive processing type. This is a very important one that I could spend the, the rest of uh, the video series on because this was the, the centering of my research uh, on uh, my educational degree. Um, cognitive processing type. Western tendency, we tend to be processors the auditorily, ear. And we're trained that way. Well, we were trained that way. I was trained that way 
okay, through ear. Uh, well, what do you mean by that? Well, educationally in uh, preschool or kinder and first grade and all the way up, um, I learned to follow directions. Simon says, and you, you do what Simon says, but it's verbal. And you're, you're learning to coordinate actions with verbal instructions. Then you get into reading and writing. And the reading was syllables, breaking down. It was phonetics. It was breaking the words down into sounds. And so we have a tendency to be auditory processors where on this side, the cognitive processing type has a tendency to be more visual. And um, their, their schooling system is, is visually based. There weren't a lot of books, there weren't a lot of resources, so a lot of the assignments are written on the board. And they would memorize that whole board and they could repeat it to you I mean they have a photographic memory a lot of them it's been developed almost to that to that level because they're visual processors the problem with visual processing is you can't take apart the image you can't break the image down so I was giving reading assignments in a technical anthropology book that they're reading it visually they were trying to generate images they I mean a large percentage I applied an instrument to see how they read what were they what were they employing either the auditory or visual processing mode to read by and and a large percentage of them were were implementing the visual mode of reading to read a textbook and if they could not generate an image of what they were reading there was no comprehension um, I was I was flabbergasted. I said, you're kidding. Because when I read, um, I can hear myself. I, there's a voice. I'm reading. I'm saying the words. I'm vocalizing. And so I'm an auditory reader. And uh, so, But an auditory reader can break things down. An auditory reader can, um, can into sound bites. You break it down. And, and so you can rearrange things. And what that does is it opens up, it cultivates pathways in the mind to be able to think in reductionist type of thinking, reduce things down, summarize. My, my students had a hard time summarizing um, the reading assignment and I would get a little upset with them because a lot of them were handing in just cut and paste. But you know if you're working on a visual processor, what else can you do? Uh, I didn't understand uh, what was going on. But now uh, I, I, I do understand that our Western school system requires auditory, but yet the modern technology that is all the students are, are, are working with today are visual. And so we are generating a visual generation that is not going to learn the same way I learned. They're not going to use books, they're going to use videos. That's why we're on video. Um, they, they, they aren't going to be drawn towards certain professions that require mathematics, engineering, um, law, that require uh, heavy reading, that require words, uh, because their mind is more geared towards uh, images, visual images. And this is what, the, like I said, this is the base of my, my, my research and as to why I could not teach in the state university as I taught in the private university. And the private university, they ate up the books. Well, not, I mean, they read them. And they, they were able to do uh, summaries. And they were able to read my tests and do things in a, in a reasonable amount of time because probably most of them were auditory processors where this side over here at the state university, they were coming in from the rural areas and they were mainly mostly visual processors trying to process visually image through images everything they were learning and uh, so in other words if they hadn't experienced it and hadn't seen it before it was very hard to uh, generate an image of, of and, and so comprehension was was lacking um, number nine type of logic uh, the Western type of logic is because it's based on on auditory and auditory is through the ears in single file and bit by bit. Um, it, the, our logic is linear. It's sequential, one after another. It's systematic and it's predictable. Cause and effect, one follows the other. And so our logic is, is systematic. 
and it is linear. Um, in a visual type of logic, the logic in a non-Western is block, and it's full picture. It's kind of like, okay, well, how does that affect reasoning? Um, okay, I, I am a believer, and I've dealt with uh, research into uh, systematic theology and different things about theology. On this side over here, there's a problem with the concept of God in that how can a loving God uh, be so uh, unjust or, or what? or a just loving God, how could a just loving God send anybody to hell? Um, that is That doesn't add up on a linear line. But on this block over here, you've got, okay, God is love, God is just, and if we do not accept the free gift of God, His Son Jesus Christ, then it says then we are doomed for an eternity separated from Him. Those are three blocks, and they're, they're separated, and they are non-Westerners are, are very good with that. Yeah, there are three different blocks. Um, you don't have to try to put them in a line and make them all logical and, and in sequ sequence because their thinking doesn't go that way. Our thinking does. So how does that affect my students? Well, the, the students sometimes learn things in blocks and we're trying to teach how they connect. And, and so sometimes you have to teach them the full block and another block and another block and then come back and, and connect them. Where in ours, we build one block at a time and that method often doesn't work over here with, with these kind of students. They need the full picture. You need to start with the full picture and then show how the blocks relate. Um, so uh, that is a difference between time, we're over time, cognitive processing, and the type of logic that, that is used in each one. So again, thank you for accompanying me in this, these three points. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, again, please, you're welcome to uh, look us up or, or enter in dialogue at uh, Double Road Rover. And uh, again, before Rover is what took us all, all over Bolivia, our Land Rover 110, pre-Defender. It, it was a marvelous machine for over 20 years. Um, Double Road has to do with the Western, non-Western culture, and it has to do with the processing modes of visual versus, or not versus, but auditory. And uh, thank you again, and we're Tim and Holly, and hope to see you in the, the next video.